Encino's the Brad Cox number two, but is he the horse for you on Derby Day? Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. Sure bet coffee. Mm. Sure bet coffee, giddy up. TTP20, if you go to SherbetCoffee.com, use that promo code now to get 20% off all your coffee purchases from Sherbet Coffee. I mean, what could be better? Sitting in front of a, a sheet of past performances, getting ready for the Kentucky Derby, and smelling the aroma of that Sherbet Coffee coming off your cup. Just seeing the little wispy aroma dangling. Oh, that sounds really good. I wish it were coffee time for me right now. Anyway, we are here to talk about Encino. While I am talking, please... Shush! Trust me. Thank you, Michael DeLuise, son of Dom DeLuise. Uh, Michael DeLuise coming at you from Encino, man. He's done other things as well, like Wayne's World, Gilmore Girls. And, um, yeah, we're actually talking about the horse Encino right now, though. $4,000 if uh, in four starts. That's uh, 1000 a start for Encino if you own him in Game of Silks. If you do, congratulations. This is a horse I adore. I really do like Encino a lot. Uh, like what this horse has shown us so far. Do I think he's set up for the Derby? We'll see in a second. So four starts, three first place, one second place finish for Encino. I mean, you you look at that record right there and you think slam dunk. I mean, this is a horse I want to circle for the Derby. I'm going to say hold off on that. I know Brad Cox thinks highly of him. I think highly of him. But I think there might be a few things that play against Encino in this one. Um, let's Let's move on. By the way, check out Game of Silks, silksio.io, if you want to get started, if you're interested in getting a horse. Maybe you'll be lucky enough to get yourself a horse like Encino. Uh, check them out as well. But yeah, here we are with Encino, trainer Brad Cox, Jack, uh, jockey Axel Concepcion, the sire is Nyquist. Whew. So, you know, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it in the jeans. Um, how he got here, he was the winner of the Lexington, which I will show you a clip on in a second. And he was also winner at the Bataglia, which I will also show you a clip on in a second here. Uh, races of note. Uh, those were the races of note. Uh, race notes. This is a horse. Uh, I've seen him win a couple different ways. Um, definitely uh, pushing the pace, setting the pace, going gate to wire. He's done that a couple times. He's looked impressive doing it. Seems to be his style. Also seen it where he comes from a little bit further back and uh, and has prevailed as well. So he's got a couple tools in the toolbox that he can use here. He's won a couple different ways, which I'm sure Brad Cox is looking at, thinking this horse could set up well for the Derby. I will say, in terms of negatives, the last time he raced was April 13th at the Lexington. That is a short cycle in getting to the Derby on May 4th. Uh, we're talking about you know, um, three to four weeks worth of time of rest, which is not ideal. Uh, the Lexington has never been an ideal squeeze to get to the Derby. You can win it, but there's horses that are going to be coming in that have uh, much more rest time going into the Derby and going into a mile and a quarter, which I'm going to say is my other negative. The longest this horse has run so far is eight and a half furlongs in competition. And he did that at the Lexington and he looked good doing it. He ran a 143 in that race. Um, but there's all sorts of other horses out here that have been tested to a longer length than that. And I think that does give them an advantage. In terms of pedigree, let's talk about Nyquist. Eight wins in a row to start his career, going from his maiden first or all the way up to the Kentucky Derby. Just eight solid wins. Very impressive. After that, um, a string of non-wins, three, including the Haskell, the Penn Derby, and retirement. I mean, <laughs> culminate that eight wins right there extremely impressive that included the bc juvenile in 2015 and like i said the derby in 2016 uh what can we expect in terms of pace profile i mentioned pace setter definitely um but also a horse that can lay off the pace a little bit still come from behind and has a kick down the stretch very very interesting play here for for um for encino top speed figure he dropped a 108 equibase at lexington my projection for him. So I do think he'll run close to the pace. I think that's his game. He does have a few other tools in his tool belt. I think the best spot for him is probably three to four lengths off. If he can maintain that, if he can find himself a spot there and then hope that he's got enough down the stretch. But I do think if he gets close to that pace, um, he's definitely going to fade back to somewhere 
in the tens. I think I think tenth place finish is probably about where Encino will finish, which is unfortunate because I I think that had the timing been better for Encino, I might be talking about him being one of my in the money finishes. I like this horse a lot. If he was going for Preakness, whoo hoo. Yeah, yeah, and Sino at Preakness. I think I would take Encino over Muth at Preakness. I, I like this horse that much. And I think a lot of Muth, too. Um, not to say I'm a Baffert hater um, and going to hate every single one of his horses looking at him subjectively, but objectively, subjectively, mm-mm, I always forget. Um, but regardless, I think uh, I think Encino would stand a chance there. So, so yeah, I think he, he'll be close to the pace. Um, maybe a little bit too close. And one of those horses that does fade back as the closers start to come in over the top, we're going a mile and a quarter here. The most he's ever gone is eight and a half furlongs. Let's take a look at that. Those past performances here. And, and yeah, I just got to remind you. Shush! Trust me. Yeah, there's a lot of chatter out there. Okay. So let me show you something here. Let me show you. Um, yeah, his gate to win victory in the Lexington. Let's look at the top here. So uh, 95 is his speed figure for BreezeNet. So you get a couple different looks at uh, top speed figures. Um, but at Keeneland on April 13th, gate to wire with Florian Giroux on the mount. Um, doesn't have Flojo this time around. Uh, he's got Axel Concepcion. But you can see when he broke his maiden second time out, also going to mile 16th, but on Tapita. Uh, this is a horse that had started his career turfway. He also went gate to wire there as well. Very heavily favored. Uh, winning by half, half a half a length there, but let's show you uh, what he looked like at the Lexington. Yeah, so here we go. He is the eight horse. He is out in front, and he's being challenged by the Wine Steward. And yes, we've got a drop for the Wine Steward, but I'll let you off the hook this time. The Wine Steward is pushing him. At this point, you start to think to yourself, it's a two-horse race, and the Wine Steward could be overcoming, overtaking him. Does look like he's starting to here. But what we like to see from Encino is he's got a little bit more of a push. You see, he's got half a length on him there, and he's starting to stretch it out to one length to three quarters of a length. And by this point, you already know that Encino is one. He's got a full length on uh, the wine steward there, a very impressive horse. Obviously, the wine steward coming off of a big layoff there. This is a horse that a lot of us really liked around the December, January time frame. So it, it's a good win, but you also have to keep in mind that the wine steward was not at his peak, most likely. Um, what else would you like to have seen from Encino there? Maybe just burying the whole pack. <laughs> if you really want to see him be a dominator, that would be nice. But it doesn't necessarily mean it, he was leading the whole way. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only way he can win. Now I'm going to show you the Bataglia. This is on Tapita. This was run at Turfway. He is the 12 horse here. So here we go. You can see him in green there starting out. He's got five horses, four horses on the inside there. He is behind all of them and starting to settle into... The second lane, maybe third lane there, getting caught on this turn, floats out a little bit. Um, and there's a few more horses that come in on the inside. So to start the race, he is sitting at about fifth or sixth, and he's also on the outside in that race. Not the ideal setup for him. He did not get out of the gate quick enough. He did not get up to first place. But what happens down the stretch? Let's show you the stretch here. So remember, he's the 12 horse here. Epic Run is the six. Um, yeah, you don't even really see him in the picture. You see him starting to come into the picture now, passing the five horse there on the outside. He takes an outside path there. Epic Run, the six horse coming on the outside. They're both starting to pass Bolt at midnight. Epic Run does so. It looks like it's Epic Run's race right now. You still have Blue-Eyed George out there hanging out. Epic Ride is starting to put his nose out there down the stretch as the number one horse. But Encino's right there on the outside in the fourth lane, um, not going away at all. So right now he's sitting about third because Blue-Eyed George found another kick. Epic Ride starting to slow, and then Encino puts it into another gear, takes Epic Ride with him, but gets a nice little one-length victory there. So doesn't necessarily need to set the pace in order to win. He found his way through traffic there. It wasn't a lot of traffic. It's not a deep close. But you can see that Encino has a couple different ways that he can win, which makes him an inter interesting play here. Overcoming the distance um overcoming what could be a, a lightning bolt pace um and then overcoming a short time though have me placing encino somewhere in mid pack by the finish you might see him up up top early on i just don't think he's able to sustain it
So there you have it. There's the formulas thoughts on Encino. Horse that I'm really looking forward to seeing in the future. I am not going to be placing him in a box, um, at least not right now. Maybe I'll talk myself into it in the future. But right now, I don't see him um, in my trifecta box for the Kentucky Derby. Let me know your thoughts, and good luck on race day.